Hello, church. Welcome again to another message um, as we continue to be in this continued state of lockdown. Um, I'm not laughing it off lightly, but I just want to have a positive attitude that I know that Jesus is still on his throne no matter what happens while we're still here on earth, especially for those of us um, in the Western Community Alliance Church um, family and friends beyond our walls and borders, we welcome and thank you for watching um, this message this today. Today, I keep saying this morning because I assume you might be watching this in the morning. But whatever time you're watching, I pray that whatever uh, I speak today is not of me, but is directly from the Father for His um, for His heart for all of us. And I just want to read first uh, today's scripture passage, which comes to you, which comes to us today um, from the book of First John in the New Testament, First John chapter four, and particular verses of seven to eleven. I'll be reading from the New International Version, so please follow along with me in your Bibles, or you can just listen to the words I'm going to speak. Verse seven. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Let's pray. Father God and Holy Spirit, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this uh, opportunity to listen again once more to your word and what what you want to speak to us during this time of so much restrictions going on in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, for despite what we may be feeling, um, frustration, maybe anxiety, um, or even boredom. Lord, help us to never lose a focus of the great commission that you have called us to live out. And it might not be the easiest time right now, Father, to do um, to share your love to others as we, as we socially distance ourselves from others, as we wear masks, as we continually um, um, practice good hygiene. But Father, you are the God of creativity, so we ask you to give us creative ways to show your love to people around us, um, starting with our families and then with a church family and going to our neighbors or even to the people we meet when we do our essential grocery shopping for that allocated one hour. So we thank you, God, for this time. We praise you because you're so good. And just please speak through me this, this day to encourage, change us, to challenge us, and to remind us of what your word says about just who you are this morning. And we thank you, Father, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, as I was about to say, um, this is the first Sunday of a new lockdown here in Melbourne, stage four. Um, it started last Wednesday, I believe, or oh, sorry, Thursday, last Thursday, and we're now in stage four because it seems this um, this pandemic seems to be unrelent unrelenting. However, I encourage you not to stress. Please don't stress, not to fret, um, but to keep strong and hold on to the blessing. I don't know if you guys remember the the, 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 the word I, I shared a couple of weeks ago, the blessing of being a child of God is not the material blessing we receive, but it's the blessing of our salvation through Jesus Christ. So let's never let um, the mundane mundane um the mundaneness of lockdown stop us from sharing the blessing to people around us and this blessing can only be really truly received if you have jesus in your life you've surrendered your life to jesus 
uh, you've, re- you've repented of your old ways, which means you've turned around from what you used to do and you now made him as your personal Lord and Savior, which grants you and grants me eternal life. How exciting! How exciting that our life will continue and memories of this pandemic will pale into insignificance. So what we need to do now is plant seeds that will have eternal ramifications for those we see every day. Let's continue to be on mission. And more importantly, it's, as I keep saying, it's been since, since March that we haven't seen each other in church. Let's continue to build each other up. Let's continue to have a phone call. We've got a phone call. Um, you know, even like FaceTime each other for those who have those gadgets to do video calls, Messenger, um, Zoom, have a Zoom coffee time together or something like that. Just have, just, just do it creatively. Just build each other up. And God has been so good to us, especially um, by His Word, because last time I shared, um, uh, I shared on God's model for care, part one. And then last week, um, we had our brother Brad Pays share with us about what it is truly to build a church, a fellowship of building people into the likeness of Christ. And I'm going, wow, God, you are really drumming into us the fact that you want to build us up, to build our church up from the inside. Um, So by the time this pandemic is over, we'll be ready you can unleash us into the into the community to just love them, to show them practical ways. And today I'm going to be sharing part two of what will become. Uh, I, I'm I'm not really sure how many parts this series will be because it's 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 a continually evolving um, thing that God's been impressing on me um, about um, His model for care. Pastoral care, um, love, building our church up from the inside. Who knows? This could go until Christmas. And hopefully by Christmas, we could possibly be together again. Um, And so today's part two of my my message series on God's model for care. But today in particular, it's titled, Why Care? And it's a biblical basis for caring. And I only really have one main point um, today, but I have several sub points under that one point. But my main point this morning that I want everyone to think about is why love? Why love? If I was to ask you, why do we have to love people? What would be your answer? And again, I miss the interaction we have. Like I could imagine me standing right now where we usually meet, asking this question, having people's hands up, and giving me um, all the random answers, which I really appreciate that, that interaction we have during that time. Or what about the question, how do I love people who are so unlovable? See, those are quite two quite valid questions for anyone to ask. But if you are a believer in Jesus, caring by showing your love to others is one way we obey his commands. His commands as his children, as we strive to obey him, especially in a time where, as I mentioned earlier, we're probably frustrated. Oh, I want to go out beyond my five kilometers of limitation under under the stage four. Oh, I wanna, I wanna meet friends, um, you know, and may and may this frustration and this anxiety be replaced with love, God's love, and let's look at what the Bible says, particularly reflecting about God's love, and I want to go back to the passage that I read earlier, but I want to focus primarily on three verses. 7, 9, and 11. So this is what verse 7 says of 1 John 4. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 
verse 9. This is how God showed us his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. And verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. You see, the love we see here in these three verses is the transformed godly love that he modeled himself when he sent Jesus, his son, to save us from our sin. And as we reflect this love on this love, and as we show this love to people around us, even the most unlovable person you come across, you will be able to love them. Not because of, of your love, but because it's, it's God's love that's overflowing from within you to reach out to them. And the first sub-point I want to just make under um, the main point that I have is we love one another because Jesus tells us to. Well, he actually commands us to love one another, especially uh, fellow believers, people in our church. And I would just want to um, read to you a, a, a passage where he's, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking, where he says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Wow, what a challenge. How can the church reach those who don't know Jesus yet if we act like those who do not love each other? And it's the love that it's not just for our church family, but it's also for other Christians. So, you know, we need to have that, you know, as it doesn't matter what denomination you belong to. It doesn't matter what church you belong to. As long as you know that that person is a fellow believer in Jesus Christ and they're striving their best to submit their lives to the Holy Spirit to transform them from the inside out. Um, they are our brother and sister in the Lord. So we also need to show love to other Christians as well. And, you know, Jesus said it directly, that as he loved us, we must love one another. And then the next sub-point I want to um, talk about this morning is, the love we show to one another overflows from God's love shown to us. So, I don't know about you guys, during lockdown, you have so much more time. Most of us are either working from home or, um, and unfortunately some of us have lost employment, but it means we have more time. It ha we have more time to spend with our God. And when you plug in every morning, to, or whenever you have your quiet time, your devotion time with Him, we will experience His love fresh over and over again. And this will eventually flow out because the more you interact with the God who is love, what, you, what He gives into you will eventually flow out of you. So could you imagine... A jug, you're, you're like a like a like a pitcher or a jug. And the more you interact with God, He's pouring more of His love to you, and eventually, the level is gonna go up and up and up. And when it hits the when it hits the top, what's gonna happen? It's gonna overflow. It's gonna overflow. It's gonna spill, and whatever that love touches will experience the love that God's been pouring into you. So just imagine you as that empty vessel that Jesus can fill you up with a spirit of love and love and love. And I love it when it says, 
when Paul says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any, any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received from God. So as his children, as God's children, with a new life through Jesus, we now receive the comfort. We are now comforted by God himself. And we are comforted especially by the Comforter. Comforter, capital C. And he, this, and he is the Holy Spirit. We need to yield daily to his will for us to be agents of peace and love. And my next sub part is, as we show love, we follow the example of Christ. You see, in the gospel accounts, wherever Jesus went, his ministry here on earth, um, he showed love, he showed compassion to everyone he met. In the miracles, in the encounters, especially with those who were, who were the marginalized, the stigmatized people of his time. And I think those same people are the same people that we also tend to stigmatize and marginalize today as well. And even for the example where um, Jesus showed love to his friends, like the account um, where he showed love to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and you can read that in John 11, 1 to 44. Jesus showed love throughout. How are you showing love throughout your daily activities? You might think, well, I'm in lockdown now. It's really hard when you're stuck at home. Um, well, what about your family? We can always love our family more first. Then, what about our church family? I miss everybody. It's like it's driving me insane. I wanna, I wanna be able to like, um, just like, I remember shaking everyone's hands, high fiving people when they walk in, or just grabbing a coffee, having a chat. Has the Spirit been prompting you to call someone? Or while you're outside during your permitted one hour um, slot of exercise or grocery run, what do you do during that time? Let's show love through an encouraging word, especially to those in the supermarkets who seem to be the supermarket the, the supermarket workers who seem to be copying a lot of abuse lately it's it's very sad it's very sad really let's counter that hate that impatience with love because that's how Jesus was we need to follow his example everyone he interacted he showed love and when we show love for others, we show Jesus that we love him. Mm. I'll just leave it here and read from Matthew 25, 36, 30, Matthew 25, 35 through 36 and 40. This is what it says. For I was hungry. And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. And you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you invited me in. I needed clothes. And you clothed me. I was sick. And you looked after me. I was in prison. And you came to visit me. This is verse 40. The king will reply. Truly I tell you. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So what, what do we do knowing that this love, we need to show love? Let's start today. Let's show love more and more. As we lean more, as we press into God's love, as we push more into His, His heart, we will then f see his heart. We will then, his passion for the lost 
will then just overflow into us. And when we look, when we look into the reality that Jesus bought us our salvation at the highest price, it was done all because of love. And let us ask the Holy Spirit to fill us again and again with His mind, with His passion, and with His heart for love. And um, this is something I was just th- thinking about the whole time. Um, I didn't actually write what I'm was saying right now, but I want you now just to think. Close your eyes where you are. And think of the most un loving person that you probably have in your life right now are they there are they in your mind think of the person think of everything they've done to you and how every encounter with them just makes it seems more ugh, like i don't want to talk i don't want to talk to them oh they drained the they, they, they drained the energy they're so toxic. Oh, like, like, I don't want to even be in the same city or room with them. But as you have your eyes closed, thinking about this person, I want you to remember that even Jesus died for that person. Because they were are worth loving as well. So... Now, challenge yourself to ask the Holy Spirit to love them as He loves them and He loves you. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time again. We thank you for this message that you have shared through me to, sh- to encourage the people listening. Help us to really become a church that is so in love with you and we love each other so much more that as we still are are, as a church scattered that this love will still connect us to each other while we are geographically apart but this love that that holds us will flow out like the picture overflowing And this love that whatever it touches will just be saturated with your love, God. And help us as we continue to be on mission to point people to you, Jesus. To point to your saving sacrifice on the cross. To save us from our sin. And help us to be bold enough to claim that people need to repent. And that when they come to you, Jesus, it's not a life of good times, but it's a life of a blessing of salvation, a guarantee of eternal life. And Father, help us as a church again just to continue to be on mission, to share the blessing of salvation, and us as well to love each other more and more from the inside out so that we just become more infectious in loving people than this pandemic and god as well just got reminded that as we pray we ask you father to intervene in what's happening in the world right now we ask you god to fill the leaders with your wisdom so that they can work together to fight what's causing this virus. And we also pray for those affected, especially here in Melbourne right now, a lot of people have lost their jobs because of the stage for lockdown, that you will just give them your peace, Father, especially those who are struggling mentally, that you will just give them your peace and help... And, and, and prompt us as your children, Christians all around the city, to be, to be receptive to you, Holy Spirit, that when someone is struggling, that you will prod us 
to reach out to them in some way so that they can still hold on and not end it as we've seen the tragedy of the suicide rates increasing in the city because of what's going on so father we thank you that you will do all of this in your time in and according to your will and father we pray that as we continue to reach out to this city of melbourne starting in our little pockets of where we live that your name will be glorified and we pray this in a name that is above all names the name at which one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are lord jesus your unmatchless name your precious name amen thank you again for being here to listen to this message to watch this message and i encourage you if you do not know who jesus is as your lord and savior reach out to us here at WCAC. The details should be at the bottom of the screen. And I encourage you, if you are a Christian and you're watching this, I pray that we just show more of God's love wherever we go. It's, it's, really, it's really tough now. It's really tough. But will the tough work now? It'll be, it'll be of... <sighs> It's all, it's all going to be worth it in the end when Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter in. Woo, I'm excited. But at the same time, I just want to, just like, uh, I want to I wanna like punch, not, not, not punch anyone, but punch this virus away. But at the same time, punch the anxiety, punch the frustration, and then when I punch those away from my life, I'll open my arms up and say, hey, who can I love today? So I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been encouraged as I have been encouraged. Um, and we'll continue again next week and look again at God's model for care, but about the bad and the good type of shepherding. God bless you and continue to worship with us today.
some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. So carry a candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused and torn.
赦免。So much has changed in our Don't wait another day.